Hello everyone, you're welcome to Mathematics Tour. This is Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint Mathematics, Paper 2, written in October 2023. There are 24 questions in this paper. If you are seeing this channel for the first time, please kindly subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell to receive notification anytime I upload a new video comment like and share this video let's jump into the first question draw a ring around the sum of the exterior angles of an equilateral triangle so you know that uh, the sum of the exterior angles of any uh, polygon will be um, 360 degrees so our answer will be this. Question number two. Draw a ring around the unit that would be the most suitable for measuring the mass of a ship. Okay, so we are going to need this because it is very heavy. Question three. Mia says, why is three more than x squared? Write down a formula for y in terms of x. So, y will be equals to x squared then add 3 so we have x squared add 3 so here y is 3 more than x squared so that is the meaning of that equation there question 4 question 5 here is the net of a triangular prism it is formed from three rectangles and two right angled triangles Take this sign to show if each of these facts about the faces of the triangular prism is true or false. The first one is three faces have the same area. So let's go to the net of this shape. So here is 12, here is 13, here is 5. So this place two will also be 5. So this place will be 6 here, 6 here. So this side which is 12 centimeters long so it will have the same length as this so this will be 12 okay so then for this one okay this particular one will be 13 because uh, that is from here to this point will be 13 centimeters because it's going to rest or lean on this uh length here okay when you fold them okay so this, that is, this side of this rectangle will fit in or lie or lean on this side of this triangle. So that means they are of the same uh, length. Okay. So uh, this is what we need to do. Uh, let's calculate the area of this one to be base times height divided by 2. So this will be 30 centimeters squared. So for this small rectangle here, it will be 5 times 6. So it will also be 30 centimeters squared. Okay, this is the area of this. This is the area of this. So this one will also be uh, base area times. Of course, the cross sections uh, are uh, similar. So this will also be 30 centimeters squared. So we have three uh, shapes with the same area. So three faces have the same area. So this is true. Okay. So let's go to the next one. That will be the area of the largest face is 72 centimeters squared. Okay, so let's complete this. So the area of this will be 12 times 6. That will be 72 centimeters squared. So why this will be 13 times 6. So this will be, um, I think, um, 78, 6 times 3, 18, 8, 6 times 1, 6 plus 1, 78. Okay, so this is the area of the... Uh, the, that's the largest area okay so the area of the largest face is not 72 but 78 centimeters square so this is false okay so let's go to the next question that will be question six point a has coordinates one comma two point a is the is first translated by vector three one to give point b so point B is then translated by vector 0, 
minus 5 to give point C. So find the coordinate of point C. Okay, so let's start from point A. So we need to translate it by this vector s equals to 3, y equals to 1. So s equals to 3 will be uh, 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, then 1 up. So point B will be here. So we have point B to be here. Then um, point B is uh, translated by vector x equals to 0, y equals to negative 5 x equals to zero means we don't uh, move either left or right so we stay there and then y equals to minus five means we have to go down five times one two three four and five so point c will be here and the coordinate is x equals to four then y equals to negative two so that is what we have as the coordinates of point c x is equals to 4 and y equals to negative 2. So let's go to the next question. Sorry. Let's write this very well. So negative 2. So the next question will be question um, 7. Pencils can be bought in small packets or large packets. Small packet has 3 pencils. Large packet has 5 pencils. Mike buys M small packets, so that will be uh, 3M for that, and N large packets, that will be 5N, okay? So, altogether, he buys 86, so that means the sum of these two, that is 3M and 5N is equals to 86, okay? So, draw a ring around the equation that represents his situation. So it's going to be 3m plus 5n equals to 86. Okay, so 3m plus 5n equals to 86. So you need to be very careful and uh, you uh, select, you need to be very careful so that you will not select the wrong one because this one is somehow uh, close to this, okay, in terms of uh, the number, the coefficients of M and N respectively. So this is the correct one. Okay, so let's go to the next question. That will be question 8. The graphs show the costs in dollars of different masses of strawberries and raspberries. Okay, so we are asked to find how much more one kilogram of raspberries cost than one kilogram of strawberries okay so we need to get uh, the value of one kg of um, strawberries okay for strawberries one kg yeah look at it here one kg is here this point here so the cost price is this so that means one kg here is equals to um six this will be six okay that's the middle of four and eight so that will be six dollars that's for uh, strawberries but for raspberries yeah we don't actually have one kg here so we need to get uh use a uh, proportion okay but we know that this is five kg okay so the cost of five kg okay let's scroll down a little bit okay so here we know that five kg implies fifty uh, dollars so automatically one kg okay implies ten dollars okay so this is how to get uh the uh, uh this is how to get one kg from raspberries okay so now to get the difference now so we're gonna have to say ten dollars minus six dollars so that will be four dollars so that's question nine it will take five workers 12 days to harvest some apples calculate how many workers are needed to harvest these apples in four days so this is an uh inverse proportion okay because as one quantity increases the other decreases okay so we have workers against days okay so if you have five workers and it takes them 
um, 12 days to harvest some apples. So that means uh, one worker will spend um, 60 days. That is 5 times 12, so which is equal to 60 days. Okay. Now, if you want, you, uh, if you want to get the number of workers that will finish or that will do the same job or do the harvest, okay, in the same uh, in four days, okay, working at the same rate, okay. So that means uh, we need to divide these sixty days by four days. That will give us the number of workers that will finish it in four days. So sixty divided by four gives fifteen. So that means uh, 15 workers are needed to harvest these apples in four days. So let's go to the next question. That will be question 10. Complete each statement to make it true. So we have 4 over uh, 8 over 4x equals to this over x. So you can see that uh, this is um, equivalent fractions. Okay, so if you have x here, okay. So that means you can multiply x by 4 to get 4x or if you have 4x here, you divide 4x by 4 to get x, okay? So this one is easier for us. 4x divided by uh, 4, it will give you x. So 8 divided by 4 will give you 2. So this is what we're going to have here. Here we have our equation of indices. We have y to the power of 12 and we have multiplication law here. So this should be y to the power of 1 or simply y. So here we have w to the power of 10. Okay, so this is power law of indices again. So we need to have w to the power of 5 here as 5 uh, multiplies by 2 to uh, give 10. Okay, so this is correct. So let's go to the next question. That will be question 11. A train company says the probability that a train arrives at a station on time is 0.85. Ahmed selects a random sample of 80 trains arriving at this station. Calculate the expected number of these trains that will arrive at the same station on time. Okay, so what you need to do is to uh, multiply the time by uh, the number of samples. So that will be uh, 0 0.85 multiplied by 80. So this will give you 68. So that is the expected number of uh, the trains that will arrive at the station on time. Number question 12a. Draw lines to match the equivalent inequalities. Okay, here you have x minus 1 greater than 2. So this will be connected to this because you can rewrite this as x greater than 2 plus 1, x greater than 3. So this will connect with this. So here, 2x is greater than 2. So you can divide both sides by 2. So that will leave you with x greater than 1. So this will come here. And of course, you don't need to work out this, just connect them together. So part B, solve the inequalities, 11 minus 2x less than or equals to 20. So here, you can collect like times or uh, you subtract 11 from both sides, it depends on you. So you can say uh, minus 2x will be left by the left hand side, so less than or equals to 20. So 11 goes to the right hand side to become negative 11, okay? So this will give us minus 2x less than or equals to 9. So you divide both sides by negative 2. So mind you, in inequality, when you divide uh, both sides by a negative um, number, so you have to get the inverse. You change the uh, inequality, okay, to the inverse, okay? So that means I'm going to have x instead of less than or uh, equals to i'm going to have greater than or uh, equals to that is the inverse of that 9 over negative 2 question 13 here are the coordinates of four points take this sign to show if the midpoint of each line segment is above on or below the x axis okay so we know that 
the formula for the midpoint will be uh, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That is the average of the sum of the x um, coordinates. Okay. Then for the y axis to be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Okay. So let's start with uh, line segment AB. So you have uh, 4 and negative 4. When you add them together, it will become 0, comma. Then uh, the y um, values there, minus 6, add 5. That will be minus 1. Minus 1 divided by 2. That will be uh, minus 0 0.5. Okay, so that means x equals to 0. Y is equals to uh, negative 0 0.5. So, of course, this point will be below the x axis. So, for CD, line segment CD, so minus 3 add minus 3, that will be minus 6 divided by 2, that will be minus 3. So, minus 2 add 2, that will be 0. So, divided by 2, it remains 0. So, we have x to be equals to negative 3, then y to be equals to um, 0. So, that means uh, it will be on the uh, x axis because x equals to minus 3 and y neither moves up or not down so it will be here question 14 when 80 is increased by a percent the result is between 105 and 110 a is a multiple of 4 okay um, at 100 percent we have the value to be 80 so if you have um if you increase it by a percent so that means we're going to have um a hundred plus a percent now okay and the value will be x so an x is between 105 and 110 okay that means uh we have uh, a number greater than 105 and then a number less than 110 so it's between this given range okay so let's uh cross multiply if you cross multiply we're going to have um okay 100 plus a okay multiplied by 80 will give us uh 100 times x okay so this is what we're going to have so we can divide both sides by 80 so that we are left with 100 plus a to be equals to 100 multiplied by x over 80 okay so this would be a whole so i can now uh, transfer 100 to the right hand side so that i'll be left with a so a will be equals to this value here 180 multiplied by x over uh sorry this should be 100 not 180 so 100 then this should be 100 times x okay then over 80 then it will be the minus 100 okay so this will give me the value of a now what i need to do is to substitute the value of x which is within this range okay so i'll pick 106 okay as an instance so if you pick 106 as an instance here yeah? so that means okay you can scroll down a little bit so i have a to be equals to a hundred multiplied by 106 then divided by 80 then minus 100 so this will give us 132.5 minus a hundred so this is the value of 132.5 so if you subtract this this will give us 32.5 okay but we are told that a is a multiple of 4 so the multiple of 4 that is close to this will be what will be um 32 so you can say a is equals to 32 so that is uh, a possible value of a okay so if you want to pick another one let's say uh you want to pick the value of uh, the x to be uh very close to 110 let's say 109 okay so that means you just have to plug in 109 here so a will be equals to 100 multiplied by 109 divided by 80 then this will be in bracket like this then minus 100 
so a will be equals to if you do this you will get 136 point um i think uh, 25 if i'm not mistaken then subtract a hundred so then a will be equals to 36.25 but we are told that a is a multiple of uh four so that means we need uh, 36 so another possible answer will be 36 okay so let's go to the next question that will be question uh 15 the grid shows the positions of triangle p and triangle q describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle p onto triangle q so that is p onto q so you can label this as um okay let's say this is uh, a point a point b and point c so if you compare this triangle abc with this uh, triangle p with triangle q now so let's label the image so triangle p is the object triangle q is the image because uh this triangle p was uh mapped onto uh q okay so um if you look at it very well that means this was rotated okay it was rotated so point a prime prime will be here so this was rotated like this okay so that means c prime will be here that means b will be here that's b prime and then a prime will be here so that is what we are going to get if we rotate it uh anti-clockwisely okay so that means we have rotation so it is uh clear that we have a uh, rotation and the direction is anti-clockwise so we need to get uh two things now uh the degree the that's the angle of uh, rotation okay as well as center of rotation okay so but firstly since i'm sure of my answer i can write the name of the transformation here so it is rotation okay and then um okay anti-clockwise so let's find the center and the angle first so we can complete that okay so to get the center of this um rotation okay so we need to draw a line and by set i need to draw a line from the object to the corresponding point to the image and by set them so where they meet will be the center of um, rotation so the first thing i will do here is that i will connect a point a and then a prime together i will bisect them then i will also connect point b and b prime together i will bisect them okay so i may want to connect uh c okay and c prime together okay and bisect them again okay so but you can do uh for two lines and that will be sufficient for you to get the center but if you want to pretty sure of the center so you should bisect the three lines okay so i'm going to do the bisection and show you the output so from here i bisected uh this line that is the line connecting a and a prime uh, together with uh and i use um, the green color to draw the axe as well as the perpendicular bisector so that is the green part and i also bisected the line segment joining b and b prime together so and i use color blue okay and you can see the perpendicular bisector so if you look at it very well uh the the two perpendicular bisectors meet at this junction here so if you um draw this very well if you construct this very well so two lines are sufficient for you to get the center of rotation so this is the center of rotation but at times you may need to bisect the third line okay so to be sure of your center of rotation but if you really do this very well 
so two lines the by perpendicular by set of two lines okay is okay okay so let's see the point here that is x equals to five y equals to seven that will be center of so you see that the center of rotation will be um, x equals to five and y equals to seven so i can write center x equals to five then y equals to seven like this then we need to get the um, angle of rotation so we know that it is anti-clockwise okay so we can write anti-clockwise then we need to find the um the direction that's the angle of the direction okay so to do this um you draw a line from the center of rotation to the to a point on the image as well as the object so i can easily draw a line from the center of rotation that is here so let's connect it to point a okay then i'll also draw another line from this center of uh, rotation to the corresponding point on the image so i'll draw it to a prime like this okay so so let's take that again so you draw from here and you connect it here okay so it is obvious that this is 90 degrees you don't need to waste your time okay so you may want to confirm this by placing a protractor there and set it very well you still get 90 degrees but you need to be very smart so this is uh 90 degrees anti-clockwise okay so let's go to part b triangle r is congruent to triangle p triangle r maps onto itself when it is reflected in the line y equals to x okay so draw a possible position for triangle r on the grid okay so the first thing we should do here is to draw the mirror line okay so that is a line of reflection which is y equals to x so y equals to x will be this line so from the origin like this so you draw to the other side there so let's scroll up a little bit so we can easily pick this and um, draw it here so this is the uh, line y equals to x that's the mirror line okay so if we want uh this y equals to x line y equals to x to be the mirror line that means we need to uh position the triangle very well such uh such a way that uh this line will divide it into two equal halves okay take for instance now if you have something like this we have a right angle triangle like this okay so let's see how it goes so this is the angle here right angle uh that this is a 90 degrees here okay so if we draw the line like this so we're not going to have uh equal halves if you draw it like this we're not going to have equal halves okay so that means the only option is to draw it like this so that means the right angle should be on the mirror line so this angle 90 degrees should be on the mirror line okay so let's see the distance of the triangles okay the horizontal is one two three then the vertical is also one two three so we can pick any point here so let's start from here so if you count one two three by this side one two three that is starting from this point here okay so let's count one two three so we're going to have this one here okay then let's count um three along the horizontal axis like this so you have one two and three here so let's connect them together so the right angle will be this one here it is on that now so let's connect this point together from year to year we have this one here then from year to year we have another one and finally we have this so this will be the triangle r and as you can see okay let's label this triangle r and you can see that uh, this divides this triangle into two 
equal halves okay so of course this will be point uh, b prime prime okay and uh you can say this will be uh let's say a prime prime and then this will be c prime prime okay so this line y equals to x serves as the mirror line okay now don't forget that we are told that the triangle arc maps onto itself when it is reflected in the line y equals to x so let's confirm that so this point um a prime now okay so if you want to uh reflect it now so you go from here let's start with uh point a prime prime so let's count from a prime prime to the mirror line so like this we have one two three so if you want to reflect it you go up one two three so it will be on a position here the same thing let's reflect point c prime prime so you have one two three so if you want to reflect it you go horizontally one two three okay so uh the image of this triangle arc will always uh falls the point of the image of triangle arc uh, will always fall on the same spot on the same point of course point b prime prime will remain here okay so that is to tell you that this is very okay and correct so let's go to the next question that will be question uh 16 the diagram shows two circles each with center o show that the circumference of the larger circle is approximately 44 centimeters more than the circumference of the smaller circle okay so uh, the radius of the smaller circle denoted by this will be equals to 11 centimeters and the radius of the larger circle denoted by r sub -treat l will be equals to 11 add 7 so that will give us um 18 we have 18 here so let's calculate the circumference of the larger um circle so that will be cl to denote circumference of the larger circle so that will be equals to 2 pi radius of the larger circle so this will give us 2 times 3.14 times the value of the radius which is 18 okay so calculator is allowed if you input this into your calculator you get 113.04 so you can also calculate the circumference of the smaller circle denoted by this that will be 2 pi r subscript s so this will give us 2 times 3.14 times the radius which is 11 okay so this will also give us 69.08 now we need to get the difference between the two okay so by um writing one by subtracting 69.08 from 113.04 that will be 113.04 subtract 69.08 so this will give us 43.96 so approximately 44 centimeters so this has been shown so let's go to the next question that will be question 17 the table shows information about the ages of 100 runners calculate the estimate of the mean age of these runners okay so what we need to do is to get um, a colon for x x denotes the average of the class limit 20 add 30 divided by 2 will give us 25 okay 30 add 40 divided by 2 will give us 35 since we have equal uh class interval okay so the, the next one will be 45 and 55 respectively okay so we need to get uh, the frequency is denoted by f so we need to get uh, the product of column x and column f that is fx so 34 multiplied by 25 
will give us 850. 35 multiplied by 18 will give us 630. So 45 multiplied by 28 will give us 1260. And the last one will give us 1100. Okay, so the an estimate of the mean will be uh, the addition of this. The sum of column fx will be uh, three three eight four zero, and the sum of column f is already given as one hundred because we have one hundred runners. Okay, so this will be one. Uh, sorry, it will be a hundred here. So the formula for the estimate of the mean will be the summation of column fx over summation of column f for the frequency. So this will be uh, 3840 over 100. So we have to shift the decimal point backward two times from here. 1 and 2. That means our answer is 38.4. So, uh, an estimate of the mean age of these runners will be 38.4. So, let's go to the next question. That will be question 18. A teacher asks three students to state the equations of two lines with a positive gradient. Take this sign to show if each student's answer is correct. Okay. So y equals to x plus 8, y equals to 2x. So don't forget, we want to get positive gradient. So here, the gradient is 1, that's positive 1, and the gradient is positive 2. So this is correct, okay? And for this one, the gradient is minus 1 here, the gradient is minus 2 here, so this is incorrect. The gradient is 3 here, 3 over 1. And the, which is positive the gradient is one out of two here which is also positive so we have the first and the last one so let's go to the next question that will be question 19 a shape is formed from a right angle triangle abc and a, a semicircle with diameter cb so ac is equals to cb equals to six centimeters Find the area of the whole shape, okay? So what you need to do is to find the area of this triangle and also find the area of this semicircle. Then you add them together to get the area of the whole shape, okay? So starting from triangle A, uh, B, C, we know that um, A, C and then B, C are equal so bc will be six centimeters as well so we can get the area of triangle okay a b c will be equals to the base times the height divided by two so this will be equals to the base is six the height is six divided by two so this will give us 18 centimeter squared then we need to get the area of the semicircle okay area of the semi circle will be equals to area of a circle by r squared divided by 2 that will give us area of a semicircle so this will be 3.14 times the radius the diameter is 6 centimeters so the radius will be 3 centimeters then squared then divided by 2 okay so if you do this this will give us uh, 14 point one uh, three okay so we can now get the area of the old shape to be 18 centimeter squared plus 14.13 centimeter squared and that will give us 32.13 centimeter squared so that will be the area of the whole shape so i can write 32.1 centimeter squared here so part B, calculate the length of AB, okay, so from this right angle triangle, okay, so we can make use of um, Pythagoras um, theorem, that is pretty easy for us to do. So from the right angle triangle, so we know, we are, we know that AB squared 
that's the hypotenuse squared is equals to AC squared plus BC squared. So, can scroll down a little bit. So, that will be equals to um, 6 squared plus 6 squared. This will be 36 add 36. So, this will be equals to 72. And then AB will be equals to square root of 72. Oh, sorry. I should work it down here. Okay. So, my apology, please. So, I should solve it here. Okay. So, that means AB will be equals to square root of 72. Then, finally, AB will be equals to 8.49. So, it will be 8.49 centimeters. So, that will be uh, the uh, length of line segment AB. Okay. So, let's go to the next question. That will be question 20. Anastasia asks the audience of a film if they liked it or did not like it. The compound bar chart shows her results. This is the key. Uh, this is for did not like and this is for liked. So let's scroll down for the question. Show that 30% of people in the audience did not like the film. Okay, so uh, we need to get some uh, information here. Okay, so the adult here, the total adult, let's write, is equals to, let's scroll up, 95. Okay, so that is 95. And then the children is equals to here, that is 55. Okay, and the total, okay, of the audience will be 95 plus 55. So that will be equals to 150. Okay, so uh, let's get the number of audience that did not like the film. Okay, so from the adults, let's see, from the adults. We have from here, that is here, up to this, okay? So, that will be the number of adults that did not like the film, okay? That will be 30, okay? So, from here, you have uh, 5, 10. Let's see again. From here, this is 10, 20. So let's take it again. So from here to here, that is, this is 5. So this from here to here is 10. From here to here is 10. And from here to here is 5. So that means uh, the adults who did not like the uh, film are 30. So I can say adults, okay, that did not like, okay. So, adults who didn't like the fame. So, are 30. Okay. So, we need to get the number of children. Okay. So, also, children. So, who didn't like the fame as well. They will be equals to, uh, let's see, from here, from here to this place is 10, okay? And from here to this place is uh, 5, so we have 15 of them, okay? So that means the audience uh, who did not like the film will be 30 add uh, 15, so that will be 30 add 15, so over the total population which is 150 that's the audience okay then times 100 percent so this is how to get the answer here so this will give us 45 over 150 times a hundred percent and this will give us 0 0.3 times a hundred percent okay so and the answer will be equals to 30 percent so this has been shown 
So let's go to the next question. That will be uh, question 21A. The distance between two cities is uh, 17,000 kilometers, correct to the nearest 1,000 kilometers. Complete the inequality to show the limits of the distance. Okay, so we have been given the lower limit. So we need to get the upper limit. So to get the upper limit, so we'll say 17,000 kilometers plus, uh, let's say, something. So how do you get that something? That something, which is this, will be equals to the uh, degree of accuracy is 1,000 kilometers. So 1,000 kilometers divided by 2. This will give us 500, okay? So the something I was referring to is 500. So this will give us 17,500 kilometers as the upper limit. So part B, the mass of a bag is 1.00 kilogram, correct to two decimal places. Find the lower limit of the mass, okay? So the lower limit as well, the lower limit... So will be equals to uh, 1.00 minus something. So we need to get this something again. So this something, okay, will be equals to the degree of accuracy is uh, two decimal places, and two decimal places is the same as hundredth because look at it. This is tenth. This is hundredth. So hundredth is one one over a hundred which is 0 0.01 so it will be 0 0.01 divided by 2 so this will give us 0 0.005 so that something is uh, 0 0.005 so if you do that that will give us um, 0 0.995 kilogram okay so that is the lower limit of the mass Let's go to the next question. That is question 22. A solid cylinder has a height of 18 centimeters. The cup surface area of the cylinder is 845 centimeters squared. Find the area of the top of the cylinder. Okay. So from here, we know that the curved surface area of a cylinder is equals to 2 pi r h. That is uh, the circumference of the base multiplied by the height that is the core surface area of a uh, given cylinder so now let's key in the values here to get the values uh the value of r the core surface area is given as eight four five to be equals to two multiplied by three point one four that is the value of pi multiplied by r multiplied by 18 centimeters so this will give you eight four five to be equals to so if you multiply the whole of this it will give you um i think uh one one three point zero four r so we need to divide both sides by one one three point zero four one one three point zero four this will cancel this and the value of r will be equals to um seven point five centimeters so now that we know the value of r to be equals to 7.5 centimeters so it is easy for us to find the area of the top of the cylinder so the area of the top of the cylinder will be equals to uh, pi r squared so the value of pi is equals to 3.14 multiplied by the radius which is 7.5 squared okay so if you key in this into uh, your calculator so this will give you 176.6 which is approximately 177 centimeter squared so that will be the area of the uh, top of the cylinder 177 centimeter squared so let's go to the next question so that will be question 23 find the values of the integers a and b when uh, this expression is equal to this expression so the first thing we need to do is to multiply this by this so if you observe very well so this 
is the product of difference of two squares that is if you have um, a squared minus b squared that is difference of two squares it will be equals to a minus b into a plus b okay so the implication is that uh, this uh, is the same as x squared minus 5 squared so that is the implication and we can write it as x squared minus 25 okay so this is the same as x squared minus 25 so you need to be very smart so add a x okay to be equals to then we need to expand this so to expand this so you multiply x times x you have x squared then plus x times 12 12 x then minus 3 times x 3 x then minus 36 plus b okay so if you look at it very well x squared we cancel x squared here yeah? so we are left with negative 25 plus a x okay then to be equals to here yeah, we have 12 x minus 3 x that will give us 9 x we have 9 x then minus 36 then plus b okay so what we need to do here is to uh, collect like times here okay so we're going to put expression like uh, okay ax will be by the left hand side then we'll bring plus b to the left hand side it becomes minus b so take note this is letter a not 9 then it will be equal to we have negative 36 by the right hand side okay so we need to bring um 25 so it will become a uh, positive 25 okay so this is what we're going to have here then we have plus 9x at the right hand side as well so we have ax minus b to be equals to minus 36 add 25 so that will give us uh minus 11 we have minus 11 so uh then plus 9x okay so i can rearrange this very well so a x minus b is equals to 9 x minus 11 so by comparison you see that a x is equals to 9 x so x cancel x that means a is equals to 9 so i can put 9 here also by comparison that is the constant minus b is equals to minus 11 so negative cancel negative so b is equals to 11 so a is equals to 9 and b is equals to 11 so let's look into the last question which is question 24 rajiv has a bag containing only red counters and blue counters okay and safia has a different bag containing only red counters and blue counters they each take one counter at random from their bag the probability that rajiv picks a red counter from his bag is 0 0.6 okay so if this place is um, 0 0.6 that means the probability of uh, rajiv um, picking a blue counter will be 1 minus 0 0.6 that will be 0 0.4 you can put this one here so let's continue with the question the probability that they both pick a red counter is 0 0.18 that is probability that rajiv picks red and safia picks red is equals to uh, 0 0.18 so this probability can be written as a uh, probability of r and r is same thing as probability of r that is for rajiv so let's put subscript r here then and multiplication uh, probability of red from safia let's put subscript s here so we know that the probability that the boats uh, pick red is 0 0.18 so we can put 0 0.18 here equals to probability that rajiv 
pixel red is given as 0 0.6 okay then multiply by we can easily get the probability that um sapphire picks red okay so that is um okay let's denote it by this okay p into r substrate s so the probability that sapphire picks red will be equals to 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.6 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.6 gives 0 0.3 so that means the probability that sapphire picks red will be 0 0.3 and of course we we'll have 0 0.7 here so we we'll have 0 0.3 and let's scroll down a little bit you have uh, 0 0.7 respectively okay so uh we cannot get the probability that they both pick blue so the probability okay that they, they both pick uh blue will be b b which is equal to probability that rajiv uh picks blue that is b subscript r for rajiv plus p into b subscript s for safia so this will be equals to uh 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.7 respectively and that will be 0 0.28 so the probability that they both uh pick a blue counter will be uh 0 0.28 so this is